today we're going to do a photo shoot with Kristen. Hey there, hi there, ho there, rock star. Hello. <laughs> I'm Fred. And she's been very insecure about being photographed with the band because of her weight. I don't think I'm photogenic at all. I always have like five chins going on. I can't stand it. As a musician, what type of image do you want to project? We are all about glitz and glamour. What we should do is take a look at your clothes. Okay. See what we have to work with. This looks like something you would wear to a convent. But it's so cute on, it really is. This is like cruise wear for an 80 year old woman. These are really sensible, ugly shoes. I think you need to step out of your shell a little bit more and actually express yourself in a more of a creative way. How much time had you spent uh, being consumed about your weight and your weight gain and the crisis situation you were in? 95% of the time. 95%. And this is at work, this is on stage. I'm thinking about my weight and I'm thinking about what other people are thinking about me. And at what point did something trigger in you that made you say, okay, this is enough? When I really started hiding behind my guitar on stage. When you're hiding behind a guitar, you're not really believing in yourself no, too much. No, no. And we need to help her deal with that insecurity, lose the weight so that she can perform to the best of her ability on stage. You go in there, we'll get you photographed. Okay. We want that Kristen, who is a performer, to come shining through. Work it. We need to get some images so that she can use them on her website. I'm really not comfortable getting my picture taken. Lean over, squish your boobs together. I think I look terrible. You need to be able to think of yourself as a musician all the time, not just when you're on stage performing. When you look like a musician, I think it's a heck of a lot easier to believe you can be a musician. Even if I don't feel confident, if I look like I'm confident, that's the first step. I think we have it. Take a look at yourself. I'm very surprised by that. You look absolutely amazing. That person looks like a stranger. When you see yourself in this, what do you see right there? Honestly, I see a different person. If Kristen needed any motivation to stay focused on her weight loss goal, this did it for her 100%. I just want to give you a little bit of a spritz before you perform. You have worked so hard for six months to get to where you are right now. When I first met you, you did not look like a rock star, and now you look like a rocking musician. You look so beautiful. I think Kristen did an amazing job with her performance. I was blown away by the amount of attitude and charisma that she had. I feel really great about being on stage now. Okay, ladies, work it. Liz is going to be in a fashion show tomorrow, so I'm here to help Liz and Maggie. They're two young women who project a much older persona, and I'm here today to hopefully help them with that. The clothing that you wear and how you move your body says a lot. Clearly, fashion is not a big part of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they felt sexy. I don't think they felt stylish, so they felt very much like they were acting like somebody they weren't. That was kind of okay. <laughs> not really great. I've brought some outfits for you that are real outfits. Sophisticated, but flashy. Okay. I've never really been a glamorous person. Hey. Let's go. You look totally younger. Now you look like you should be in a fashion show. <laughs> if I could, I would dress a lot more edgy and funky, but I've never really known how to go about it. Work your hips. You have hips. <laughs> that is much better. So do you feel more confident? I feel good. Maggie Darling, strut your stuff. I don't like to be too flashy like what he put me in. I can do it, I'm not as comfortable in it. When they were put in an outfit that spoke to their personality a little bit more, they had more fun with it. They became more alive and more playful. Yeah. If someone tells you you look great, let that be motivation to look even better. By really feeling that they're worth being successful, it will allow them to be successful. Come on out. Oh my oh goodness! My goodness. <laughs> you look totally different. so pretty! Six months ago, you definitely looked like a middle-aged fairy housewife, and now you look like a yummy mummy. This is total surprise. You look like an actual supermodel. You lose the weight, you gain the confidence. That's definitely how this has kind of worked out. You actually look like the sexy young women you should have been all along. Never seen Liz like that before in my life. I never even imagined Maggie could look like that. They definitely did not have a clue that their wives had the potential to look that amazing. Both were utterly gobsmacked, shocked. <laughs> I think this journey has been so successful for the both of you. Good. Gorgeous, Perfect. gorgeous, Good. gorgeous. Good.
I didn't think you guys would look this hot. You should see the heat coming off her. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I understand that 1950s burlesque styling is something that you're very into. I thought it'd be fun to get you to meet these ladies, the Kabuki Guns Burlesque Troupe. I think the burlesque aesthetic is a celebration of true womanly beauty. Looking at the way these girls move, you can burn some calories. <laughs> yeah. I'm very self-conscious when it comes to dancing, and I know that it comes from a completely self-defeatist bullshit place in my psyche. How about the revealing type of costumes? Yeah, that's, that's a little tough. So do you struggle at always feeling like you're covering up your body all the time? But I think I do it so automatically now that I'm not um, always aware. I'm tired of being this way. Yeah. And, and I just want more from myself. I'm hoping to be able to show her that she really is as beautiful as everyone says she is. Okay, ladies, Guy is going to join you. Show her some of the moves and some of the expressions and how to use her body. Take it away. Use your hips and your butt to help make a big O when it comes around. And Guy, I think less scared, more sexy. Yeah. <laughs> because you're like, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, just like love. There you go. Okay. But I think Gaia might actually feel a little bit more like she was part of the act if she was in a little bit of costume. You know, a little pair of frilly panties. And this number. Well, <laughs> might as well go all the way or forget it, right? Go so. all the way. <laughs> so, oh is this hard for you to be here in this outfit right now? I feel like 60% awesome and 40%, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to phase two. <laughs> When I met Gaia today, it was obvious she was so full of anxiety. Every time I looked at Fred, I was reminded that this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> you know? Gaia made major headway in her ability to self-accept. It wasn't about doing it perfectly, it was about enjoying the moment. Very good. Very, very good. Even in this moment, I feel more authentically myself. I feel really exhilarated. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, Gaia, are you ready? I'm ready. You look amazing. It's really a joyful thing to me to feel this good. The biggest obstacle for Gaia on this weight loss journey was certainly her negative self-talk. She carried her insecurities around with her all the time. So how do the people around you react to you now, Gaia? You know, I don't really know if I'm perceived differently by people because I'm a lot less focused on how other people perceive me. Well, I can tell you right now what people perceive is that, wow, I wish I could be more like that. <laughs> It's made everything about my life more positive and more exciting. <laughs> this is your bedroom. It speaks to who you are immensely. There's a lot of clutter, a lot of chaos in here. All of this suggests to me that you just want to hide. It says that you're not happy with who you are. Are you lonely? Yeah, I'm very lonely. I want, I want to be with somebody. So you've shut yourself in this small community in this small town because you're embarrassed about how you look. <laughs> it's like he knew exactly what I was thinking just by looking at my room. Like he could tell exactly what I've been doing. And that's really scary. We're going to go in the city. We need to come up with an outfit that is going to look more like downtown cool girl instead of fat country girl. Just throw that on. Right now, you look like you are 20 pounds lighter than you were before really? you left the room. As we leave this room, I want you to make a commitment to me that things are gonna change dramatically here. And if you want to create an opportunity for you to be able to bring romance into your life, you need to have a sleeping space that is actually <laughs> inviting. And this room does not do that. All of that says a lot about how you feel about yourself. And I want all of that to change. It will. Have a seat. When was the last time you dated? Three years ago was last time I had a boyfriend. So did you feel self-conscious? Mm -hmm. Very And much. how did that affect your intimacy? It was a big issue. You're perfect. <laughs> Let's go. OK. <laughs> she did not take two seconds to even look to see how it came together. And I think that's just because she spent so much time not looking at herself that she's going to have to learn how to take time to look at herself. As you're approaching 30, are you starting to have a little bit of a panic? Oh yeah, big time. And is your weight loss part of that? Yeah, definitely. That was my goal, is to get, you know, to get my shit together before I'm 30. It seems you've exhausted all of your social opportunities in your hometown. <laughs>
Beat, 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 beat. Bye. See you, Christy. And if your goal of being in a relationship really is important to you, you really do need to develop a strategy that will allow you to meet other people. Yeah. And when you do that, you need to exude confidence. That's a big thing for me because I always put myself down, make it fun of myself. What about these dimples? <laughs> and I don't want you to be a loser. No. Sitting at home feeling sorry for yourself. You need to put yourself out there because the world isn't going to come and knock on your door. Do you think that's gonna happen? Yeah, definitely. Here's to no longer sitting at home, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes and being lonely and pathetic. I love it. <laughs> okay, Christy, come on out. Ba ba boom. <laughs> you look fantastic. How do you feel? I feel amazing. I love it. I love my hair, I love the outfit, I love everything. When I first met Christy, my impressions of her were that she was someone who was loaded with personality but had absolutely no self-confidence. That's totally changed. Now I'm much more aware of my appearance and making sure I look good, you know, fixing my hair. And tell me about your bedroom. <laughs> my bedroom? <laughs> That's huge. That was the worst bedroom I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. And it's changed 100%. Have you had any visitors? No, not yet. One day they will come. <laughs> I swear to God. Congratulations, you've accomplished a lot and it really shows you look amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. Hello. <laughs> Take me right. to your wardrobe. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, oh, so boy. guess a lot of this is just all about coverage. Yep. Coverage, coverage, coverage. Yep. Maximum coverage. When was the last time you felt beautiful? Uh, it's been a while. This is a dress that, it's my goal to get back into it. This is when I felt beautiful. Can you try this on for me today? I can't get into it. Can you just try? I'll try. I'm in the dress. You're in the dress. <laughs> this is the dress that you want to fit into when you lose all of your weight. Right. This is not a good gold dress for you. It isn't? No, this is too easy for you. <laughs> what you need to do is develop a persona of the image that you want to project and how you want people to see you. So, I just want to pull out a pair of mommy jeans. I know. Big fat bum mommy oh, jeans. Yeah, they were. Yeah, Here's were another mommy. pair. These are all exactly the same <laughs> pair of jeans. And they all make your bum look equally <laughs> bad. <laughs> you are living the life of an older person that you are not. And I think we need to project an image of Margaret that is more exciting. These, at least, are better jeans. Yeah. The pockets are better, the cut is better, the leg is better. I couldn't fit them in more, so they had to go into so my retire. So you're going to put <laughs> this top and these jeans on for me. It's too tight. We still need some work to do. Yeah. But what I wanted to show you is you've immediately become six years younger just by changing your clothes. <laughs> you honestly have. I think Fred was right on the money. And it makes me that much more excited to just keep on pushing for that new body. My role in Jennifer's journey is to be here, first of all, to support her in the decisions that she wants to make. Uh, I come from a bit of a fashion background. With runway work, as you know, there's different walking styles. She's interested in getting back into the modeling industry. A little bit of a hip and a little bit of a bored out of your mind. She needs to get photos done. When you're looking at the front of the camera, not being square on in front of the camera, she needs to really build her confidence so that she can step in front of a camera again as a heavier woman and really feel that she looks great. How do you feel when you see images of yourself like this? I mean, you're still absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. You're totally hot. And looking sexy. But you're not. I know, I'm definitely not that person anymore. But you know what, I'm almost glad because that person wasn't very confident didn't make any decisions, and so I think really the first decision I made as an adult is to get fat. Deciding to get fat so that you could facilitate a change in your life yeah. is just a bad decision. It's dumb. I wish I could go back and talk to this 19-year-old and say, <laughs> wake up. And how does your boyfriend feel about you getting back into modeling? He's pretty excited. Excited about He's excited. having a... Hottie. Hottie <laughs> model girlfriend. Okay, Jennifer, come take a look at these. Here we are. You look hot. Yeah. You look really hot. No. I mean, you're incredibly, incredibly photogenic. Now, we're looking at you at a size 18-ish, mm -hmm. and if you can just imagine you as a size 12, mm -hmm. like, you're gonna be great. There are a lot of skinny girls who would not be able to take a picture that looks that beautiful. I'm discouraged by how I look now. You know, you have an image in your mind of who you are and what you look like, and yeah, I know that that camera doesn't lie. Okay, so Jennifer, now we're going to actually take this photo mm -hmm. we have of you, and we're just going to retouch it a little bit, which happens in fashion all the time. Okay, 
So now we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison between the before and after retouch. It definitely looks like it's come down, I'd say, three sizes. But both are beautiful photographs. I'm a little freaked out right now, actually. Can you take her in really, really freakishly skinny? Am I gonna cry? I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I can't even look at that. That is amazing. I can't watch this. Uh, it, just, it just broke something in me. I think that's the first time we see Jennifer actually being truly emotional over her stupid and silly decision to gain weight. You're gonna be really, really, really scrutinized when you go back into the world as a model. What sort of impact do you think that's gonna have on your self-confidence? I'll just have to learn to live with it. You get criticized every day in life. People can say all they want about me. I've just gotta learn to love myself. It's not gonna be that easy for you to shed eight dress sizes, but if this is something you want badly enough, you can do it. So this is... This is our catch-all room of catching everything. And you guys have kids. Yes, very many loud ones. You know, when it comes to kids, I know as a mom anyway, I always put myself last. So you do have to learn how to prioritize time for yourself. Are you supportive of each other and your... Yeah, we're supportive of each other. Goal? Anthony calls a competition, and I call a comparison. Um, so is that an issue? It has definitely been a heated talk at, at times. Do you feel that you're really best. quickly outgrowing your living space? Oh, I time. felt that about five years ago. When you're in a house that allows you to be overwhelmed by clutter, often it's reflective of the emotional clutter that may be going on in your life as well. There's a table over here that's covered with all the kids' stuff <laughs> and a broken down computer that I would really recommend setting in the middle of the room to be able to have a place that isn't in front of a TV where you can sit down as a family, share a meal, and actually be able to communicate. So is it safe to say there's stuff in here that you guys will never wear again, never use again, no longer want? Uh, um. Yes, yes, yes. So I think one of the things that we should really do is take a look at everything that you have in your house that you no longer need or is no longer useful or of value to you and get rid of it. This is my absolute worst nightmare. I don't want to sit there and talk to somebody about whether or not I wanted to keep certain things in my closet that have been there for six years. Do you be stupid about it or do you accept the help even though it's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? coming into their home and going through and showing them the things that they need to get rid of, it brought out these feelings that she has of failure, and we needed to deal with that. Okay, guys, here's some boxes. Everybody's gonna go to the room and put some stuff in this box that they no longer need or want. Do you see what's happening here? I'm doing all the work, and you're just standing there. I look good doing. Nothing. Standing here right now. Okay, this camera is going in the garbage. So if this it is the. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So anything that doesn't work or is broken, what do we do with it? Garbage. garbage. Uh, a cabbage garbage. patch kid that's certificate. That's very important. We've got that's a China, China thing. Oh, we got this Can't toy. Like Who's listening to me? I think this decluttering process has been very valuable for both Anthony and Mary Chu because, first of all, it allowed them to realize that when you start getting rid of physical clutter, it also brings out some of the emotional clutter that exists. Chris wants to project an image of masculinity and ruggedness, and it's in total contrast with what it is he projects on a daily basis. Look at how hot you look. This, to me, is more of a natural expression of who you really are. We need to do a little bit more work on the abs. The shirt is 30 pounds away. You clean up really well, I have to tell you. You look very, very modern, very hip, very cool. I'm still too heavy yeah. to wear this outfit and have it look the way I want it to look. Chris looked great, and he did not allow himself to experience the feeling of what looking great can do. Does this motivate you to it get does. to your end goal? For sure. I want to look the part of success. I think Chris has two states, in control, and uncomfortable. And I thought it would be fun to take him for a pedicure so someone else will be in control of him for an hour and a half. How do you feel in your bathrobe, Chris? Whose waist is this high? <laughs> oh my god. Nice, eh? Sure. <laughs> Are you enjoying being at home with your daughter? Yeah, it's been a blast. And what about stress at home? 
you know, I'm a very schedule-oriented person, and it's very difficult to have a schedule when, you know, you're kind of taking care of your child. It's would you describe yourself ever as being flexible? My, my wife would say no. Do you guys communicate well? We communicate well, but I'm sure she concedes and just goes with the flow. Yeah. How is your intimate relationship with your wife? Um, it had tapered off um, just due to the way that I had been feeling physically. I just simply felt, you know, kind of disgusting, just kind of overweight, sore back, headache, and we both had a rough day. Was your weight a problem for your wife, or was your weight a problem for you? I, I really don't think that it was a problem for her, but it definitely was a problem for me. It was simple to just kind of let her go up to bed, and I'd stay down and continue my bad habits for another hour, hour and a half, watch TV, play video games, eat a bag of chips. By the time I come up to bed, she's sleeping. So you feel you're in a better place right now? Yes. With respect to Chris's relationship with Maggie, I think he needs to work on bringing more intimacy in their relationship. They need to start functioning as a loving husband and wife, not just two people who are co-parenting a child in the same house. And how are your feet feeling? Relax. <laughs> I am here to talk to Michelle. Originally, the plan was to look at her wardrobe. Walking through her yard on the way to the door, I see we have a few more issues to discuss because I think there's more than just her wardrobe that we need to touch on today. The state of her backyard, and I'm sensing the state of what's going on inside of her house is hugely impacting who she perceives she is and how people see her. We're gonna talk about image and, and self-esteem. Self yes. One of the things that I noticed just coming up your back path is there's a little bit of chaos going on in the backyard. Yes. And I sense that that was indicative of the chaos that might be going on inside the home as well. Yes. And I think what we really need to do is develop a little bit of a strategy so you can develop uh, or create less chaos in your home so when you come home at the end of your very chaotic day outside of the home, that there's less stuff going on inside the home to make being here easier for you and your family. So you're going to perform miracles. You're so cute. <laughs> I'm going to try. One dog is responsibility of enough. A lot of dogs is a lot of responsibilities. And I think maybe you're getting to your breaking point and you just have too many responsibilities. And when you get to the point where you feel the amount of responsibilities you have is out of control, you're not gonna feel really great on the inside because you're not able to handle everything that's on your plate. I mean, you are able to accomplish a great deal and you should be proud of the, the fact that you've been able to take on this challenge and be so committed to it, but there are other challenges that you have. Um, we are having a meeting on Monday um, about placing Connor because He's so physically strong. Yeah. So things are either going to change very d dramatically around here, um, or based on what the ministry says, they're not going to change at all. I, I can understand. Well, actually, I can't understand how terrible this news <laughs> is for you because I'm not in your situation. Yeah. But either way, you have two Too very much. big things to deal with. Either Connor is going to be placed yeah. or Connor's not going to be placed and he's still going to be in the home and you're still going to face the challenges of raising your son and your two littler girls and dealing with four dogs and trying to keep chaos right. at a minimum. Right. So you have a huge need to make you feel better and special. Could you cut this for a sec, girl, please? Okay. It's a moo. Okay. People identify these outfits with fat people. Fat people? Moo's to me look like pajamas. Women right. who wear moo's look like they forgot to get dressed in the morning. Underneath, I don't think Jeanette knows how to reconcile the person she wants to be with the person she is right now. It doesn't in any way scream sexy. You want people even in a corporate environment to be able to stand back and say, you know, Jeanette, as effective as she is at her work, is also a very sexy woman. I think you should have a much more exciting hairstyle as well. I hate to say this, looks very middle-aged to me. Okay. You have to start thinking differently. She thinks she's dressing hip and modern and funky and outrageous, and I didn't see any of that in her wardrobe. Take all of this to the Goodwill <laughs> and start all over again. Today I'm meeting Fred and I'm so excited. I'm not seeing a lot of pretty, I I'm not seeing a lot of but color. But you know what, Fred? I don't feel pretty. So why would I dress pretty? Why don't you feel pretty? I have always associated um, 
fat with ugly. We live in a culture that associates beauty with thinness, but beauty comes in all different shapes and sizes. You shouldn't hate yourself or feel ugly because you're a large woman. When you believe something for so long, it's really hard to believe something different. I don't know who the real Amy is anymore. People see you as a full-figured girl with a beautiful face. Aww. So, and you are beautiful and sexy, but none of this it's represents that. What I see when I look at your wardrobe is it all looks like pajamas to me. I really haven't paid much attention to keeping up with the fashion trends. This is what you wear at home when you're, you have the flu. I've just been trying to keep up with my waistline. This is my lingerie. Do you like it? So when you go to bed, you're covered up head to toe. Uh-huh. Do you ever allow yourself to not be covered up? Oh, no. What about when you're... No, no. You're... No, no. There's no no of that going on either. <laughs> Maybe if you put on a little silk teddy every once in a while, you'd get a little bit of something because you're dressed as Mrs. Santa Claus when you go to bed, for God's sakes. This is not sexy. You need to let your husband know how comfortable you are with who you are while you're with him to let him see your body. Treat yourself to a nice little lace teddy, something that's got a nice shock of color on it so that oh, even now that you can feel sexy. That just gave me an sexy. anxiety attack. <laughs> <laughs> lace, oh my gosh. In order for her to communicate to people the person that she wants to be, she needs to change what she's doing a lot. Do you own a skirt? Oh gosh, no. I'm a frumpy old housewife. It's good that we can get rid of the whole victim Amy and let's bring out that new, sexy, exciting Amy. That was a pretty harsh realization that my closet is that bad. You need to believe that the old Amy is gone and people will notice instantly. That'd feel good. I could see something happening where she was starting to understand what I was saying and really get it. Ta-da! That's what I have left. This is your new wardrobe. That's great. So what we're going to do is look at image and self-esteem. Explore what your image says about you. Football jersey, football jersey. This football jersey, football yeah. jersey. It's all very athletic. I like sporty sexy. So you do have a nice athletic frame yeah. and you've got good shoulders, you've got good legs. So you can, you, there's a lot of things that you can do right now that you're probably not even aware of. So also there's the question of age appropriateness too. What you're trying to do is hold on to the glory days. And as we get older, it starts to make us look kind of ridiculous. So what that suggests yeah. to me is a lot of the clothes that you're wearing right now are probably inappropriate for your size. When you imagine yourself married and with a family, what does that man look like? I don't know. If she wants to attract someone who is going to have the same goals as she does, I think she needs to put forth an image that isn't so much party girl as much as it is a little more serious. What we want to do is redefine sexy for you so that it works better. Your skirts need to be a little bit longer. Sometimes more can be sexier. Longer skirts are better for you. Okay. Hopefully you'll believe me in that. I don't know about this long though. Makes me feel like an old lady. You've got old and stylish yeah. mixed up. You, know, you don't have to expose everything in order to feel that you're looking hot. It's a much better choice for you, stylistically. When you're trying to make an impression on people, especially if it could be Mr. Right, you meet walking down the street or in a grocery store, you want to make sure that you're, you know, yeah, okay. looking good. Yeah.